On this episode of the Procedurally Generated Show, Tony curses the moon, Cole enters into a gambit, and Ethan finds the heart piece. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome to the Procedurally Generated Show. I'm your host, Tony, and joining me this week, I've got Ethan. Howdy, howdy. That's my howdy. line. Howdy. Oh, you, I'm Tony. You're doing a howdy, third howdy. howdy. That's that's just, that's too many howdies. <laughs> Except, I guess Woody says howdy. Uh, the shark in Toy Story says howdy three times. Yeah. God, that was such a good joke. Too bad you weren't there for that one. <laughs> oh, I, I heard that joke. Oh yeah, we we finally got a good time to like relay it over to you like properly, so it worked out. But like <laughs> just the random absurdity like between me, Stuart, and Jason, where it just comes up one day. Yeah, I uh, I think COVID is over in our house for the most part. Are you ready for COVID two? No, I I definitely do not want COVID two. COVID two, the sequel. <laughs> there was plenty of sequel. <laughs> to uh to be had during covid one so um that's plenty 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 of covid all right all right so also joining us this week we've got cole can you believe they brought me back after all the times we, we couldn't have a podcast without you didn't we have you last week i don't know i don't know i don't know if that's true i think yeah i'm pretty sure you were on last week yeah yeah so yeah, 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 I think he talked about uh, Destiny or something. I, that does sound like something I would do. <laughs> that I, I believe you've talked about Destiny a few times on the show. I mean, that's what I played this week, so. Is it? You know, Cole, you know, if Destiny is so good, why is there not Destiny 2? It, that's what I'm playing. That's what I played this week. <laughs> really? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so this week I played Destiny 2. Um, I didn't mean to offer us right into that, but I just I couldn't uh, pass it up, you know. Right? <laughs> no, I, uh, I've i been finishing up the last stuff in the season. Season's over next week, so... Hey, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, so getting... I, a lot of people do bounty prep. I'm thinking that might be a good idea, because that's how you jump up ahead so you can get into the harder activities earlier in the season and stuff. Um, so I might do some of that. But I basically... I ran a bunch of stuff to get my character a little higher so that way I can qualify for Grandmasters. So I have a few days to try to do some Grandmasters this season, maybe get some adept weapons. By the time this episode goes live, it might be a day before or day of the update. So I've been doing that kind of thing, uh, <laughs> looking at just looking at challenges, stuff like that, trying to get bright dust for the ornaments before they're gone or vaulted or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um because next week's new season and uh, that weekend is a old raid brought back from Destiny 1 and apparently that's been spoiled I don't know what it is but I haven't looked or read into it yeah I haven't either I I had an, I, I have an idea of which one I think it is I think everyone thinks that it's King's Fall and I think they're wrong but again King's Fall so that's Oryx yeah, I, I would rather they just bring back Crota, like go in order one, two, three, and four. You know, that would be cool. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what they did. Everybody's thinking, everybody thinks it's going to be King's Fall. I'm thinking it's going to be Wrath of the Machine. It's going to be. Uh, I, I would be very happy if it was Wrath of the Machine. Since I, I think that's the only raid I didn't do in Destiny One. Well, so my speculation. No, no, no. Wait, I mean that's the only raid I didn't actually get to see a lot of. I yeah. didn't. I didn't even see videos of it. Oh man, you gotta watch. If you have a chance, I, you should I, watch it. It is. I, th I know I did Crota, and I think that's only actually Crota's the only raid I did in Destiny One. 
Yeah. But I've, I've seen most of the bosses in the other ones. Yeah, you've done Vault of Glass when it came <laughs> when it's in Destiny when, 2. So. Yeah, Destiny 2 definitely did Vault of Glass. Yeah. That's uh that's a big one. Um This week I haven't done it yet, but this week it looks like uh some of the pinnacle Dreaming City, so Last Wish, we know that raid. And uh the Shattered Dungeon is dropping pinnacle, so it's like a very underpowered pinnacle drop. Pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I did I tried I tried some more attempts to solo uh duality, the duality dungeon. And I got the first I've gotten this was this morning. I got to uh so I'm still at the first boss. I haven't killed the first boss. But I got yeah. the health down to one third left. And then I died, and I was like, oh, I gotta take a break. And I was looking at the health, and I was like, yeah, that's two thirds. I got four million out of six million health. So that's not bad. Yeah, it's. I'm getting better at it. I'm. I. I have to try to get it before season's over because, again, season over means that your power lot drops back down to whatever the season's new base is. Um, and I've heard some speculations that they're talking about getting rid of power level, but I don't. I don't think so. I mean, it's totally be like close to where we're at again. That's right. I need the next expansion to come out so I can be at the same light level as you guys. Lightfall is uh, a couple months away, I think. It'd be like three months. Because there's a, this season, and uh, then the next chapter, is of which will be Lightfall, will come out after that. And seasons are typically three months. Because yeah. as, as, as long as it's, you know fairly soon after the expansion comes out I'll stay I'll you know be at the same light level as you guys but then you guys play so much more than I ever have a chance to play that I fall so far behind relatively that's why, quickly that's why I'm always talking I'm talking about uh, Destiny 2 every week because it's like I'm playing it that's that's my go to every week is to play that I've, I've played a couple of other little games I still haven't started um, I still haven't started the Spider-Man's but dare you. but I but I did play some more on Stray. Got a little bit further. Nice. Let, let Autumn play that, and she ran in circles and made us sick for a little bit. But it was <laughs> pretty cool. I mean, that's what a cat does. Yeah. No, she she definitely made it realistic. It was like knocking stuff off uh, desks and stuff like that. Oh man, you need to ever play. Uh, I think it's cat cat simulator. cat lateral damage. That one, yes. Cat lateral damage. I'll look that one up. That definitely sounds like. <laughs> something up her alley yeah because that is all about just wandering around as a cat knocking things off of stuff yeah you're in first person the whole time but it that's all you do is like left like your left and right paws are like two different buttons and you're just like swiping at everything knocking crap down yep cat quap i love it (laughs) it's got mad jumps too man well to be fair cats have mad jumps I yeah, know. do you always land on your feet? Yeah. In the game? Exactly. But that's pretty much it for me. I just did that. I've played oh, maybe I should talk about the thing that I put in the intro. Gambit. So I played Gambit a lot this week. Okay, that's the thing, yeah. Yeah. So I I hadn't played it much this season because everybody's talking about how crappy, crappy Gambit is. Got. But I played it some more. I've had some fun. I got pretty good at it uh as a titan i think titan is probably my favorite uh person to play as in gambit i i did all my gambit titles on my hunter but the Mm -hmm. titan it's it just seems easier for me on my titan um you want to play on my titan and finish my right my my trophy or triumph off yeah i can do that um (laughs) Uh, DM that's like the time. eighth time that's we've talked about this like once every like what three months now yeah yeah I <laughs> and it still mind, just doesn't happen i don't mind gambit now crucible that one was a pain oh no i would not ask you to do crucible yeah. now if you went in there and did it, it's like oh that's cool <laughs> but i'm not gonna ask you to do that that's crazy that's crazy it's crazy talk um but yeah so i played gambit a lot i um tried a couple of different things i've been running like lament is my heavy, and then I switched because I saw one of the seasonal challenges is to do trace rifles and shotguns and, and gambit. Mm-hmm. So I've been using um, this the not the seasonal. Well, it's a solar. It's a solar um, trace rifle. That's a legendary. Mm-hmm. It might be a seasonal one. Um, and then shotgun. I just use um, 
drive your cannon. That way I have enough uh, ammo in both guns for each match. But yeah, no, it's actually pretty fun. Um, when you when you don't get teamed up against people who are way above your skill level, it's pretty fun. Like we had a few yeah. games, we had a few games that were like really close for the entire game, and mm-hmm. those are those are a blast. Yeah, I've sort uh, of yeah. found that same thing with like when I play Halo. If I if I end up in a match with people that are fairly close to my skill level, the games are really fun to play. But exactly. a lot of times when you're playing Halo, you're matched against people who are way better than you. Yeah, and that, especially that makes it not so however much fun. late you're playing it and, and getting into the game. Like Destiny 2's on, we're on year three four. of Destiny two. Did Destiny four? Yeah, so Destiny four. Year four of Destiny two. Year eight coming up. Uh, gosh, it's next month, I think. September, yeah. September, is it September 13? Maybe. I don't know. Dude, uh, uh, September 6, 2017, Destiny 2 came out. Six. Okay, yeah. So, 13. we're like, <laughs> it, next month, we're hitting five, year five. <laughs> so, eight, 17 to 18, 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 21 to 22. That's August's birthday. <laughs> uh, That's what so it was. It was August. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's about to hit the six year birthday. Yeah. Five year. If it came out in 2016, 17, that's six years. Oh, 2017, yeah, five okay. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought you said 2016. And the mm-hmm. other one came out in 2013. 14. September 9th, 2014, Destiny One. Warframe, tw- March 25th, 2013. I did all my math on Jeopardy this earlier, so <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any left. <laughs> and none of us got the answer right until they gave us the hint. That's, that's true. true. <laughs> we're like, don't put hints, but secretly, yeah, go ahead. The hints were on. Anyway. Gosh, Thank that you. game was so frustrating. Like, I love yeah. Jeopardy. That's one of my favorite games to play, especially when my wife and I play games together. We play Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune a lot, and Play Show Jeopardy is just an exercise in frustration because it. Yep. The game is good. Like, I love playing along with the episodes. That's the that's probably the best way to play Jeopardy. Um, but the constant disconnect issues every five minutes where you have to completely get out of the game and get back in. You lose all the money that you've earned. It's just ridiculously frustrating. Yeah, it's not good. It's fun, but it's not good. Uh, But that's me for this week. Uh, What about you, Ethan? You've been sailing some more in uh, Wind Waker? Okay, so... Last week I said I was searching for one stupid single heart piece <laughs> <laughs> have you found it i found it the okay. next day after that recording like i'm just sailing the seas i am checking maps i've spent the entire battery recharged the entire battery on that gamepad went back in there found it that day it was in a random submarine because i was out of ideas of where to search at that point yeah and so i was like the submarine this stupid submarine the one that i farmed Go cobbling necklaces or no mobbling necklaces out of. <laughs> Got the heart piece, went and kicked Ganon's butt. Yeah. Stabbed him in the face. So I have a 100% save file, gameplay wise. Nice. Of Wind Waker. You have I done that, something I, I have that never makes done. It, I think that makes it for like every Zelda game I've played now. Except for uh, Breath of the Wild. No, 100% of that. Dang. I'm you got not all the Korok I'm seeds? Not, I'm not counting the poop. Uh, Just okay. in the same way, I'm not counting doing the picture thing in Wind Waker. <laughs> okay. You, you have to go get pictures of every NPC yeah. and talk to a guy, get him to make little fan models of them, then he puts them on display, and you have to wait like a whole day for that, which means you have to play the stupid song of, or song of waiting twice. <laughs> I think I know, I think I know a, a young gamer who might have done that. Oh, I'll probably still do it. So technically, I have a 40% <laughs> save according to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I love how your 100% is the same as 40% to everybody else. Oh, I mean, you no. Know, it's like, why would anyone do that? Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know why anyone would go after 900 Korok seeds. That just is... Okay, I need to do that. Put, so it, on my, yeah, put, it, put it on my tombstone. 
Yeah, that all went out. It all Ah, man. I think so, I yeah, got Wind 40 Waker. or 50 by the time I was done with Breath of the Wild. I think That's the right. re- I think the reason why you have to get 900 is because if you get if you get 999 and then you get one more, the it's game a one crashes. Up. Link gets two lives. Oh no. Oh no. You can't do that. He's uh he's one of one of the lives he's Link, a uh, character in a video game. And the other life he's Thomas Anderson. One of those lives has a future. The other does not. Anyway, Ganon's fight in Wind Waker, I forgot how they try to make it seem super difficult, but it's like Yeah, it's really, it's, really simple. It's, it's really extremely simple, simple. Yeah. It's like I, the most trouble I had was like she's shooting light arrows and he's dodging them and it's like why what's going on and it's like oh I had to go over and talk to her so that way I would know to deflect them back at Ganon mm. deflect one it's like alright yeah it's over <laughs> Gosh, you know, I, yep. now that I think about it I don't know <laughs> that I've ever really had much trouble f- with Ganon fights in any Zelda game I, I mean, think Breath the one Wild, that... Breath of the Wilds Breath of the Wilds was ridiculously increased. easy did you, did you try it on Master Quest oh no no <laughs> No, I I I play through those games once. I never touch like the the new game plus or anything like that. So well, that's why it's so easy. <laughs> like normal <laughs> difficulty, that's it. That's that's fine for me. You need the Dark Souls of Zelda games. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I don't need. <laughs> but seriously, like out of all the Zelda games, that was like the easiest final boss I've encountered ever. Yeah. The other, like, fights are, did, the other fights are a little bit longer. I had so much more trouble fighting the stupid puppet Ganon right before him. Uh, and that thing had like three different bird. forms. The bird, the, the bird took more hits than Ganon. I don't know what's going on with that. He's stronger. Uh, the true final boss was... I, don't even, I didn't even have like the powered up Master Sword at that time. That took so much. Man, just... Rage quit. Thirteen hearts. I love watching anyway. watching your your thing. You're trying to sell Beatles bags of things that he's already sold you. Like he's like, I can't buy that from you. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I love Beetle. The second strongest. I would say the strongest. This the second strongest character in the Zelda universe. In Breath of the Wild. No, in the in just in the, the the entire universe of of uh, Zelda. No, 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 no. In, in this one, he he's like a skinny guy. In Breath of the Wild, that guy's jacked. He's carrying that huge backpack and mm-hmm. looks like a beetle. It's just the graphics have been upgraded, so you can actually see how buffy is. <laughs> I mean, th- there is a beetle that wears like a, a helmet in uh, a Wind Waker, mm-hmm. and I I don't understand why he wears a helmet. And he's like, oh, I'm I'm having this cell. This ends in seven days. And then the number one being Tingle, of course. Oh, of course. gosh. So, speaking of Zelda, <laughs> um, I I was on an, another podcast. Okay. Uh, Wednesday, just before we did our live stream, I was on the Need for Speed Running podcast, uh, one of their pit stop episodes, so a shorter episode, mm-hmm. just to talk about stuff, have fun, and that's about it on there. Uh, the episode, I don't know when that's going up. When it does, though, I will drop a link to it for people to listen to. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, it is not PG. <laughs> so uh, some language is used in there. Not by me, of course. Or was it? It's rated G. <laughs> no, no, I... I Rated G it's not for PG. golly. There's a lot of language in this show. There is some language. I uh, I didn't participate in the language, but I still had fun there. Those guys are great. Uh, it was uh, our buddy Luigi's apartment, uh, and so it was really great getting to do another podcast thing with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jay Hobbs, who is heavily involved in uh, like Game Sun Quick and and basically the, a, a lot of other things. And uh, so yeah, we did an episode and they were wanting to do a different a fun new, different thing on there to uh, gauge audience interest in there to see about how to get people in interested in more speed runs yeah 
And so we all took, uh, we all picked two different games that we wanted to see speedruns of, or had seen, or something that you know, just something to bring up, talk about, and see if we can get everyone else interested in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so uh, I picked some good two fun games to talk about that I'm not going to spoil, so people have to go and listen to that episode. What about one of them? So that way you give them a little tease. <laughs> oh, please, Tony. I, <laughs> I, I, I can't do that. I mean, it's not like I'm going to go and talk about Bullet Witch on someone else's podcast. No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, 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 I mentioned Bullet Witch. <laughs> <laughs> He's out there doing God's work. I wish that game was backwards compatible. That was the first thing I put in my Xbox when I got the Series X to see if it would work, and it's not on the backwards compatible list. Uh, but it is on Steam. Yeah, but I don't want to break go. my computer. I'd... <laughs> and, and your story did come up on the episode, Tony. Did it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Man, my poor Xbox. Uh, I, I, I may have oversold it, but it, it, it's still a good story. <laughs> it is. That game, that Bullet Witch has given us lots of enjoyment over the years. For such a bad game, we've had so much fun with it. I, I, I just, I really blame Shelby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would it's, love, it's, I would love to. I, so did you, you streamed it, right? At some point? Yes, I streamed the console version, and no one watched it. I was going to say, what we... What I would love to do is I would love to go back and watch you screaming that, so you can you can you can have your own Mystery Science Theater three thousand take on your own stream. I you know I would be perfectly fine doing like a commentary on my own stream, saying, "Why did I do this? This is so dumb." I, I would do so much better nowadays. <laughs> I uh, past <laughs> past Ethan was so dumb. I keep do seeing uh, every time I look on the Xbox, you know, the Microsoft store, I see Ubisoft sales and zombies sitting there every time. It's like four dollars, and I'm like, I would, I want this game, but I don't want to spend even four dollars on zombie. But at some point, I probably should, just so I can have that game because I don't have a copy of it anymore. Zombie I got U. Zombie U on other consoles where they drop the U. Okay. So zombie was just an I. Yeah, they took off the U when it left the Wii U. So yeah, zombie four, zombie uh, three hundred and sixty, or sorry, sorry, zombie one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I am trying to I am trying to plan like a twenty four hour stream or at least a longer stream just for a, as long as I can go mm-hmm. or something. I and uh, I don't know that might be like. In a week or so, or two weeks, I don't know. It's going to be soonish. Uh, if people can are actually watching and they ask enough for it, I'll play some stupid Bullet Witch. Yeah. We, we need to plan on maybe doing Extra Life this year because I've wanted to do it again for a while. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Cool. And I think that's end of October, maybe. So it's sometime in October. I have no idea when it is. Even if we don't do a full 24 hours, I, w- I would love to do something for Extra Life again. Bet. I'm looking up when it is. <laughs> I, I know it's in October. At least I'm pretty August sure. 19th through the 21st. Wait, what? Oh, wait, that's Tabletop Appreciation. <laughs> yeah, I knew, I knew that one was Woo. going on like this weekend. Uh, let's see. About experience, community resources. Ooh, that was close. I don't know where to look on here. But I'm on their website. Yeah, that's that's weird. They don't have. It's usually in October. I think one year it was in November. The dates just ended up being uh, a bit strange. It was October 32nd. Uh, November 5th, 2022. So it's first weekend of November. Okay. Do you remember? Wow, my, all these Google searches are like, "Is Extra Life real? Is this legit?" <laughs> <It's> like, really, guys? 
Extra Life Game Day 2022 is November 5th. November 25th. No, not November 25th. November 5th. Oh, okay. It's the first weekend of November. November. Yes. Of November. <laughs> so. Awesome. So, there you yeah, go. that's what I've been doing. Sound me. What's up? Your turn. Tag, you're it. Uh, I haven't been doing anything. I don't I don't do anything ever. You just get mad at Jeopardy. And... Pretty much. Uh, I did a bunch of yard work today. It's the first time in like a month or a month and a half I've mowed my yard. When was the last time you played uh, Lawnmower Simulator? Uh, about a month ago. Still when was the last good. time you played Lawnmower without the simulator? Uh, a <laughs> month and a half ago. Like it, It's been so hot and so dry here that the grass just died. So I haven't actually had to mow the yard in about a month and a half, about six weeks. Um, of course, I, I also blamed having COVID on it for a couple of weeks that I was like, you know what, I, I should probably mow the yard, but I don't feel very good, so I'm going to not mow the yard. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't put it off anymore. It really needed it, and so we did yard work today, and I got the yard mowed. Um, Chivo unlocked. But aside from that, I have been playing uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 with uh, with cool. Jake. Uh, because that game has co-op. So nice. Uh, which the first one did not have. Um, I wonder if there's a two player one control. No, wait. Two one two controllers, one player uh, strategy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're probably. Uh, it's really easy mm-hmm. for the Switch to do the two controllers, one player thing. We Jake and I have mm-hmm. done that for a couple of games, um, and played through them that way. But uh, Curse of the Moon Two has actual proper multiplayer support. You both play as the main... You start off, both of you play as the main character, Zengetsu. Um, oh, weird. And uh, then after after you beat the after you beat the first boss, you get the next character, which is... I don't remember what her name oh, is. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, it's she's... the girl with the spear. Yeah. Um, cannot remember what her name is, though. And then the third character you get is Robert, who is... Uh, he uses a gun um, he has very very low health if you get him anywhere close to an enemy bad things are probably going to happen uh, right but he is pretty awesome <laughs> yeah he is really really awesome um, and it, it really helps to be able to hit some enemies from all the way across the screen uh, the game's really fun though and it, it's been interesting to play through that game co-op and I've never played Ritual of the Night more than about two hours worth Mm-hmm. Um, I need to go back and play that because I've played both of these uh, Curse of the Moon games now. Why do I still have that ad going? Um, but I need to go back and play Bloodstained proper, and we're going to talk about that in the news actually later because there's an update coming to that game. Yeah, they're getting some weird updates. Um, but it, the the co-op stuff in Curse of the Moon 2 is, is really cool. You You both occupy the same... You can occupy the same space if you walk into it, but if one of you is standing somewhere and one of you jumps, you land on the other person's head. Um, and so you can walk around on somebody else's head. And you actually use that. There's there's spots in the game where you really need to use that to reach like high places or there will be a spot where there's a really thin place where you would normally have to crawl, but it's slightly up off of the ground, so you can't unless you start off on someone's head and then you use Robert to duck down because he can actually crawl uh, through small spaces. And so you actually have to be laying flat while you're on top of someone's head. And it makes a ridiculous looking <laughs> um, thing. But the the game itself is really, really good. And uh, it makes really good use of having multiple characters at the same time and working together to solve some of the puzzles in the game that... There's probably ways around, but you get special secrets or bonuses or um, different paths through levels if you um, you know work together uh, to solve the the puzzles in the game. Um, and we've found that for the most part, the levels themselves are the hardest part of the game, and the bosses are not that difficult once you get to them. Right. Um, because the bosses are more like a puzzle, and it's like once you know the puzzle, it's just fun. It's really more of the the level getting to the boss is the puzzle, and then the boss is just 
take out all of your frustration of having died so many times <laughs> getting to the boss. Uh, so um, that's fair as well. <laughs> it, it's just nice to be able to wail on a boss and uh, you know not have to worry about dying too much to the boss itself. Um, which the boss in single player would probably be much more difficult, but because you've got two players that can you know aggro, you know the boss or awesome. take different parts of it it makes it really easy to to kill the bosses if you're working together in co-op the boss um, but i really really like these these curse of the moon titles i think they're really nice sort of smaller chunks of the bloodstained story um, using some of the same characters and the same bosses and the same levels, even if the layouts are different from Ritual of the Night, it's it's really nice to have these small, bite-sized, not really bite-sized, but just smaller experiences inside that world. NT Creates does a really good job with uh, taking these big games and you know making a proper Mega Man out of Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah, yeah, um, I was gonna say Mighty Number no. Nine. That the 2D stuff was way better than Mighty Number no. Nine. Was uh, you know the the Mighty Gunvolt Burst, which spawned out of Mighty Number no. Nine, is a much better Mighty Number no. Nine game than Mighty Number no. Nine itself. Uh, and you get to play as Beck, so you know at least that character got. I, one, I would hope. One I would hope you get game. to play as Beck in the game that is named after him. Someone so. get the door. <laughs> no, not that I'm Beck. A loser, baby. Not that oh. Beck different uh, <laughs> so aside from a little bit of I played a little bit of Forza this week because I got the Hot Wheels um, expansion which is so good like that is just flat out fast racing on insane Mario Kart style tracks in Forza uh, and I am having so much fun with that and then uh, Madden 23 came out and with uh, Game Pass Ultimate you get to play it for the first 10 hours without having mm. to buy it so um i'm playing a bunch of madden to to take advantage of having the game for 10 hours for free and then i will probably actually end up buying it because i'm having a lot of fun with it um, but that has been it for me really it's just mainly been curse of the moon and uh trying to to decide if i wanted to play ritual of the night right now um before anything else big comes out, because I had have, have you not, have you beaten Ritual of the Night? No, I've only played it for a couple hours. Is all. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, I have played far more the Curse of the Moon stuff with Bloodstained than Ritual of the Night. That's fair. Um, so, but that has been it for me. Let's take a quick break, and then we will come back and we'll talk about the news. Good yeah, Drake. Go. I'm ready. Cole, you ready? I'm ready. Ready, ready Steve? Mm hmm. Andy? Mm hmm. Larry? Alvin. Curly? Okay. Wait, no. Alvin. All right, fellas. I'm just throwing out random names on there <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Parable, Edith Finch, Alan Wake. Okay, muting my mic. <laughs> Here we go. All right, here we hey, lean your head forward again, or off to the side. Is that cat eyes I see in the background? Back in the door? The It looks like two glowing eyes back there. I was more expecting you to say, since he's streaming, I said, are those cat ears back there I see? It is. There, There is a cat back there. Yes. <laughs> it took me a minute, because I couldn't see him. But yes, there is a cat back there. So those are eyes that I see reflecting. That's yes, awesome. Those are those are cat eyes. There's not like a like a demon in my kitchen. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> technically there is. Just a cat. <laughs> That's all it is. Okay. Cat. So it's a kitty cat. All right. Uh, first up in the news, a little bit. Uh, no, <laughs> big news just came out in the middle of the night on. Wednesday. Um, and that was that Embracer Group basically bought everything. Yep, they own Earth. Uh, I mean, more or less, they do. I mean, they own Middle Earth now, actually. 
Apparently, yeah. Uh, because you own that, but they found a way. They bought the rights to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit franchises. So, um, when it comes to TV, movies, video games. Basically anything but the books, Embracer Group now owns the rights to Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And that came okay. along with a big sale. Like, they bought a bunch of stuff all at the same time. It wasn't just Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, but the biggest portion of it was the Lord of the Rings. And they bought it for actually a lot less than what the previous rights holder was looking for because I think it was January or February this year that they started, you know, throwing out the idea that maybe the Lord of the Rings IP rights would be up for sale soon. Um, and But they were, at the beginning of the year, they were looking for about $2 billion and Embracer Group revealed that they purchased uh, the Lord of the Rings for 700, I think it was $774 million. It was barely over a quarter of what they were originally asking. <coughs> Which seems crazy to me. Um, so that's just for Lord of the Rings. I don't know for sure if that was everything that they bought or if that was just Lord of the Rings. I think it was just Lord of the Rings, but I'm not 100% certain on that. A lot of the news stories have been kind of... Uh, it's been hard to tell exactly what uh, the full price was because they also announced that they bought limited run games. So they now they're tired of waiting for their games to come in from them. So they're like, we'll just buy them instead and I make them give so. us the games. This is the weirdest part of the purchase to me because I don't know what limited run games gets them. You know that they didn't necessarily already have unless they're going to turn limited run games into a bigger publisher, which seems like it defeats the purpose of limited run games. Uh, maybe. Or maybe it's just to help them like, get stuff out in a more timely manner, I guess. I mean, that, obviously, they see, they see some something to be earned from that. Yeah, but I I don't know if it's just that now that they have you know they have somebody in their company now that has more publishing knowledge. Um, but I don't really know. Like it, that's that was the weirdest part of the whole purchase to me was was the limited run games thing and I'm trying to pull up the list of everything that they bought um. all all I know is I, I I have a Scott Pilgrim thing ordered and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for that to come in yeah and waiting like your raid jacket got that no no, Got not the red jacket. Those. That's not like the red jacket. That's like your coin uh, solstice of heroes shirt. That one took. Yeah, forever. yeah. I don't even wear that anymore. It's like I finally got it. It's like, yeah, I'm not gonna wear this, and I actually just wore it for like going to sleep, and eventually the uh, gray kind of got blended in with the gold and looks really gross. My yeah, so I stopped wearing it. Now we're like a G4 shirt that I got for free. <laughs> My computer just told me I don't have enough space to continue recording the podcast, so I guess I will download the stream again this week. Um, let's see, what else? They they bought Tuxedo Labs. Uh, which, Tuxedo Labs, what are they known for? Uh, they do, they you know, develop sandbox, puzzle, and action games. I'm trying to see some of the ones that maybe that they have done that we might know of. Tuxedo Labs. Uh, oh, these people. Okay. Teardown is so, one of their games. Yeah, Teardown's a pretty awesome looking game. Uh, but they've done... Oh gosh, where is this list? You've done it now. Quick. Make jokes while I'm looking this up. Uh, Lord of the Rings. They made Teardown. <laughs> yes, they made Teardown. 
the other, one of the other groups that they bought was Tripwire Interactive, who are most well known for the Killing Floor games and recently Man Eater. Okay. Which is that okay. shark game? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I played that. I I have not played yeah, that. Killing, that. Killing Floor was an all right game. It's just I didn't have friends that would play it with me. Friends. <laughs> What's a friend? Not not that I'm judging people. Killing Floor is a scary game. No, it's really not. Oh, it's fun. Oh, it's fun. Maybe we should play Killing Floor next week. Okay. What's it on? I don't know. Everything. Does it have crossplay? <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's got crossplay, but it's got. It's definitely online, and it's pretty much on everything. Okay. Uh, Killing Floor Two is like the most recent thing on that, but. Uh, yeah. So, uh, earlier this year, Embracer Group bought Crystal Dynamics and IDOS from Square Enix. So they now own the Tomb Raider franchise, among other things. Because Square Enix apparently didn't find making money from that. Uh, I mean, according to Square Enix, those games sold poorly, but I think they were all multi-million sellers. They were, and there was like... Uh, uh, like one of the developers, I forget which, if he was the... I think he was, what, the Hitman developer or something before he quit or something was talking about like just how the Japanese side of it was like oh yeah these games are doing bad and it's like doing like really freaking good yeah so anyway uh, among other things that Embracer Group has uh, they own Dark Horse Comics okay they're known for uh, I mean Hellboy Dark- right huh didn't they do the Hellboy series I don't know. I mean, I know Dark Horse Comics does a lot. If it if it's not Marvel or DC, there's a good chance it's probably Dark Horse that publishes the comics. Like, so. uh, Stranger Things, Resident Alien, <laughs> Berserker or Berserk? Sorry, not Berserk. Uh, Black Hammer, Hellboy. Yeah, there it is. There you go. The reason I know who Hellboy was on there is because I watched uh, two movies recently. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the other biggest thing I think that they own is Gearbox. So uh, that they, means they own Borderlands. Borderlands. And Tiny Tina, and all of that stuff. Clap Trap and Jack Black. Yep, they own. Jack <gasps> that's why Black. Jack Black is. That's why Jack Black is Clap Trap. The name. <laughs> So there you go. Yeah, it, and it, they announced this in the middle of the night. I think it was about one o'clock in the morning that I saw the announcement come across. I was laying in bed scrolling through Twitter and saw people. Yeah, talking most of us it. were waking up in the morning to the to the news and like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. So Embracer Group. Yeah. Now they are as big as Microsoft and Sony when it comes to just what they own in the video game space. <sighs> That's why they want to limited run games. They want to make their own game console. Oh, don't let don't tell them that. That we it'll, call, it'll be called Ouya Two. Oh gosh, definitely don't tell them that. <laughs> so, uh, earlier, I mentioned Bloodstained. That's one of the games that I have been playing. Um, Never heard of it. Uh, tell me about it. Ritual of the Night <laughs> is going to be getting an update later this month. I believe, or I think it might be in soon, soon, very soon. Um, but this new update that I believe is free will be a new area in the game that is inspired by Journey. Not the band, the game. Just a small town map. No, not that Journey. The Journey okay. where you're going through the desert, and you occasionally walk, ran, you know, come across random, unknown people. Is it, is it the blood. longest Journey? Oh, thank God it's not. Uh, <laughs> but this, this is like right after they did the uh, uh, oh gosh, what is that? Child of Light DLC, which is the uh, I think that was an Ubisoft game. Yes, yes, it was. So it's like where are they they're going with like these weird indie games that were kind of big hits. Uh, Child of Light, I, I didn't actually play that one. So, but Journey that was a pretty awesome. Experience. 
See, I've never played Journey, so I, uh, I the, the online interaction is like random people that you'll be teamed up with. You don't even have to te- do anything with them; you just go off and do your own thing. Yeah, yeah. I heard There's a no lot of people talking about other than hitting a bell. I've heard a lot of people talking about that game and saying the experience of coming across a random person in the desert and sometimes you do things together and sometimes you're just like, hey, and then you wave and you move on. And uh, yeah. it was a re- it was a really interesting way to do multiplayer in that game. Yeah, it's one of the few games where I don't get mad at the multiplayer because it's like, I don't need their help. I can do this by myself. <laughs> so... Uh, but there's going to be a new section of the castle in Bloodstained called the Tunnels, and it's inspired by Journey. Um, once you've navigated through the cavernous maze, you'll be able to battle the level's guardian, defeat it, and you'll unlock this special Journey-style item. Uh, the entrance to the tunnel will appear after you have freed Jeebel and unlocked the Den of Behemoths. The room with the doorway will be marked on the castle map. Head to the highlighted area on the map and you'll find the entrance to this Journey section inside there. So don't that, stop <laughs> believe it. are you are you required to play journey while you're playing the journey section of bloodstained yeah unfortunately Le- legally ob- obligated to legal every obligation. time yes mm-hmm. except if you're streaming it because then you'll get like a you know yeah that's copy on strike up. so you don't oh, no, that's do that. when I that you just you have to sing over it so that way you don't oh well just don't say the vod <laughs> there you go that's the best way to do it. So, yep, that is coming soon, and that will be free for anybody who has Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. So you, uh, there is a at least, at least you. My son yes. will probably play through that because he's played through uh, a ton of Bloodstained. I think multiple nice. times at this point. So. Uh, September 27th uh, there is a game coming to Steam that if you haven't played it I think you absolutely should do so um, and that is a game that Ethan does not want to talk about for some reason <laughs> uh, Kana Bridge of Spirits it's not a bad game it's just it came out and it's like no one ever talked about it I love this game from the first time I saw it, I thought this is probably the prettiest game I have ever seen on a console. Or on a computer. Um, so, uh, it is done, it is the first game from a company called Ember Studios, I believe is their name? Ember Lab. Um, hmm. They're most famous for uh, CG YouTube shorts and things of that nature, like the... Uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask Skull Kid short that was out, um, I think, last year. Uh, Wait, really? Yeah. Huh. Uh, cool. If, if you haven't seen it, I would highly suggest watching it. It is, it is a gorgeous piece of cinema. Um, and they definitely take advantage of their knowledge of CG work and making things look really nice because Kana is one of the prettiest games I've ever seen um, and this is a big anniversary update for the game it came out uh, September 21st of last year was its original release date for the PlayStation and it was also an Epic Games exclusive on PC um, but on September 27th the game is coming to Steam and there it's getting a big update that will include a new game plus and a bunch of uh, new outfits and uh, equipable items that have not been in the game before um, hmm. and some new challenges called spirit guide trials so they're, they're giving you a reason if you've played it already giving you a reason to go back and play through the game again and if you've never played through the game it's the perfect time to check it out it is it is an absolutely wonderful game uh, there is a bit of uh, like a sort of you know rise and fall in the difficulty a little bit uh, because it is their first game they you know it's not balanced perfectly well um, there are some some bits that you know some players will find frustrating but for the most part I loved every second of my playthrough of that game okay 
So really, really think you should give that one a shot. Oh yeah, it looks really pretty. Um, and then uh, we talk a lot about Destiny on the show. Uh, we don't necessarily talk a lot about Fortnite because none of us really play a lot of Fortnite. But we talk more about Raid Shadow Legends than we do Fortnite. That's probably true. Uh, there is a crossover happening between Destiny and Fortnite. Something's Thanks, going on. Thanks, yeah. Sony. I didn't do it. So, so, Sony. Oh, I thought you said Tony. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard Tony as well. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Tony. Great job. <laughs> I mean, I've played Fortnite, but Same. I'm not responsible for... I would not say, you know what? Fortnite needs Destiny. That is what would make it the greatest game. Oh, my God. It's Goku with a gun on... Okay, well... Yeah. <laughs> and now he's Chug. chugging down some some uh, shield juice or whatever it's called. I don't remember. Chug, chug. So, yeah. oh yeah, chug jug, chug jug. Uh, but yeah, this is footage from the recent Dragon Ball Z update, where characters like Bulma and Goku and I don't know Vegeta. who else. Vegeta. Uh, it's so weird because you can do the Kamehameha as Vegeta now. Yep, you can do it Dude, as uh, the Rock. So you can do it as anyone. It's just seeing Vegeta do it is. <laughs> Should be illegal. It's just it's Garrett. also it's one of those things. Seeing Goku with a gun, like I I've not watched a lot of Dragon Ball, so I don't know if Goku ever uses a gun in Dragon Ball. Nope. It would, it would make sense that he wouldn't. But but now you can run around as Goku with a gun, fighting Naruto or Darth Vader with a gun. Um, with a gun. Yeah. The Wolver- Darth Vader with Wolverine claws. That too. Holding a gun and a kitty cat backpack. So. Uh, something, something. Fortnite is just weird at this point. There is so much happening in Fortnite and so many crossovers that have come to that game. Uh, that I, I don't know if there's an Ariana Grande skin, but I know there was like an Ariana Grande concert in Fortnite. And so I wouldn't be surprised if you can play as Ariana Grande. So the Fortnite cinematic universe is quite strong. Oh, just wait till the movie comes out and we start with the, the Fortnite initiative. Uh, nice. But yeah, apparently there is going to be... There's rumors. I don't know if it's been completely confirmed. Do you guys know for sure about this Destiny crossover? Mm, I don't know. It's Apparently it's confirmed where it's going to be like a crossover between some armor stuff. I don't know how in-depth it's going to go. We'll get more details on that later, but it, apparently it's going to happen. So Yeah. Yay. With like some of the more prominent <laughs> Fortnite costumes coming over to Destiny as armor. I swear, if they tell me I have to go play Fortnite to get this armor and stuff on there, it's like, <laughs> nope, I'll never get this armor now. <laughs> oh, I would definitely... I, 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 I could bite the bullet. No pun intended. I mean, you bite lots of bullets in Fortnite. Yeah. So. I mean, you do. I get that epic royale. <laughs> I have Jeez. never won a solo match in Fortnite. Oh, uh, they have a lot of bots now, so it should be it should be easier. I mean, you'd think, right? But uh, apparently not. So, uh, but yeah, Fortnite stuff coming to Destiny, probably Destiny stuff coming to Fortnite. If I can play uh, Fortnite as any, uh, like Cade Six, they should bring Cade Six to Fortnite. Tony, what? Wow, <laughs> too soon, bro. Too soon. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So yeah. Uh, eventually you'll be able to you know fight Fortnite characters as Goku if that's your thing. So. Oh, there you go. And then lastly, there is another mini console coming. Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, it is not from yep. Nintendo. It is from Sega. It is a Genesis. They are doing another. Genesis mini console. And this whole list of games is ridiculous on here. Uh, yeah, we've got the full list but of it's games. it's awesome. Um, it's a pretty good list of games. I'm not going to... There's 60 games coming to this console. Uh, I'm not going to read off the full list, but there's some... The main thing to take from this is we're getting a handful of Sega CD games on here. 
And then, uh, uh, I think this was confirmed for uh, a U.S. a U.S. release finally too. Because I it's believe so. For because it was just being said for uh, Japan, and it's like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, Night Trap will be on the on on it. Oh, that's the best game ever. <laughs> yeah. So there's your selling point right there. It is a great way to own a copy of Night Trap. Night Trap. Uh, let's see, Earthworm Jim Two, Sonic CD, Sonic 3D. What was that? What else rhymes with 3D CD? Blast? There we go. <laughs> there you go. Those are the only games you need to know that are on here. And Vector Clay Man Fighter. Two. It's, it's getting Clay Fighter. Clay Fighter was nice. like, oh my goodness. I thought that was just a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, that's oh, what I thought too. Clay, Clay Fighter 64. 63 and a third, you mean? <laughs> so yeah, uh, Genesis Mini 2, going to be a thing. Yep, there is a, it's like a six minute trailer that shows everything that's coming on that system. So, uh, do we know release date and price yet i'm assuming this is like a hundred bucks october 22nd for the release date and i have a pre-order i forget what it costs uh, the new give story. me a moment install i will it, find out the new story that i i see order. doesn't have a price on it um so uh, some other games i mean some fairly uh common Sega releases like Rise Star, Streets of Rage 3, Street Fighter 2, uh, the new Challengers will be on this. Uh, Vector Man, Virtual Racing, <laughs> Echo the Dolphin, the Sega this one, CD version. This one is running $100, Tony. What? 100 Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I had seen somewhere that it was uh, 99 bucks. So. Yep, but there you go. It will come with one controller, a six-button controller, HDMI nice. cable, um, the system itself, and of course, power cable. So Yeah, I think the previous one came with a six-button controller if you were in Japan. Yes. And because I think they, we got ha they had a number of games that, that handled that, whereas we got, we didn't get that over here. We had to get a special controller that you had to buy from 8-Bit Go or something. I forget where. Yeah. So it's really nice. Yep, we, we just got the three-button three version finally. over here. Uh, but that will be it for the show this week. So thank you very much, Cole, for being here. Thanks for putting up with my shenanigans. I mean, Yay. we got to have that weekly Destiny talk. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thank you very much, Ethan, for being here as well. Of course. If I wasn't here, it'd just be you and Cole and without me. That's true. <laughs> that is very true. That's accurate. I, I was going to say something. I was like, no, that's going to sound mean if I phrase it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but you are 100% correct. If you were not here, it would just be totally